everybody. Today we are going to talk about the second part of aerobic respiration called the Krebs cycle. So, so far we have gone over glycolysis, and as we know, <clears throat> glycolysis gives us pyruvate and 2 ATP and 2 NADH, and we're going to find out what happens after that. So cell respiration begins with glycolysis. Glycolysis gives us a little bit of ATP through substrate level phosphorylation. Glycolysis also gives us NADH, and then it gives us pyruvate. And the pyruvate is going to move into a mitochondria. This is where the next part of respiration begins, and we will begin the Krebs cycle. Okay, so glycolysis. Glycolysis is basically going to have turned glucose into pyruvate, two of them. But we didn't do anything with the pyruvate, right? Pyruvate has chemical energy that it can yield. We have three more carbons that we can oxidize. If oxygen is available, then what pyruvate is going to do is it's going to enter the mitochondria. And the enzymes of the Krebs cycle are going to break pyruvate all the way down to carbon dioxide. <clears throat> so this We've got two, three carbon compounds that are being broken down to the one carbon CO2. So that's complete oxidation of pyruvate. <clears throat> okay, so mitochondria has a double membrane, as you already know. The outer membrane is very smooth, and the inner membrane is highly folded. Sometimes it is referred to as the cristae. I'm probably never going to refer to the cristae again, but that is what it is referred to in some uh, texts. There is the intermembrane space, that is the space between the membranes. <clears throat> there is the matrix, that's the middle, kind of looks like a maze that's within the inner membrane. <clears throat> There's DNA and ribosomes found in a mitochondria. As we know, it started off being its own bacteria. So that's what a mitochondria looks like. Okay, we already know that a dividing mitochondria looks a lot like a bacteria, and that's because of the endosymbiotic theory. We also already know that the highly folded membrane gives us a lot of surface area to bind those enzymes. We're going to skip right over that. <clears throat> so before we can really begin Krebs cycle, a little tiny reaction that we call the oxidation of pyruvate has to occur. So a mini step before Krebs. Pyruvate is going to turn into acetyl-CoA. This is a three-step process, and it happens twice. So why does it happen twice? Because how many pyruvates do we have? We have two. So this process, which happens twice, is going to release two carbon dioxides. Right? So we have three carbon pyruvate that's going to become a two carbon acetyl CoA. So we're losing a carbon. That carbon is lost as CO2. So that's oxidation. And in that process, we are going to form NADH. NADH is going to be an electron carrier. So NADH is going to strip some of those electrons from pyruvate and take them away. So we get two CO2s, we get two NADHs, and we produce two acetyl-CoA's as a result. Acetyl-CoA still has two carbons on it, so it's still something that we can work with. So then acetyl-CoA has to enter the Krebs cycle. So where does the carbon dioxide go? The penguin is asking a good question. Where does the CO2 go? Well, it's a waste product, so it is going to diffuse into our blood, from our blood into our lungs, and our lungs out into the air. <clears throat> okay, so here is another picture of pyruvate oxidation losing a carbon due to CO2. Okay, so the uh, carbon is oxidized and the NADH gets reduced. And that happens twice. 
Okay, so the Krebs cycle, sometimes called the citric acid cycle, it takes place in the mitochondrial matrix. That's the very middle of the mitochondria. And it has a bunch of steps. Each step has its own enzyme. And it's basically the catabolism of a citrate molecule. Uh, the Krebs cycle evolved later than glycolysis. And if you think about it, that should make sense because bacteria which don't have the Krebs cycle also don't have a mitochondria. So this is a later process. Okay, so what's going on? We start off with a two carbon acetyl CoA. And this two carbon acetyl CoA is gonna join up with a four carbon compound that is already present in the mitochondria. Two plus four gives us six. So now we have a molecule of citrate. The six carbon compound eventually becomes oxidized to a five carbon compound. So we're losing a carbon because of carbon dioxide. The five carbon compound eventually becomes a four carbon compound because again, we lose another carbon dioxide. These are exhaled out of our body. Four carbon compound continues to change thanks to a number of enzymes until we are left with the initial four carbon compound that we started with. And the whole process happens again. This is gonna happen twice per glucose because one glucose gives us two pyruvate molecules. Okay, so let's think about this again in terms of electron carriers. So we've got our citrate, and what happens <clears throat> is when we lose that carbon uh, for carbon dioxide and we become a five carbon compound, we also lose some electrons thanks to NADH. NADH is helping to oxidize that compound. <clears throat> and then it happens again. We lose carbon and we lose electrons thanks to NADH. So we've now made two NADHs. In addition, we also have to phosphorylate ADP to make ATP. That happens to some of these intermediate compounds down here. So we've had uh, substrate level phosphorylation that occurs, which changes the compound even more. We produce FADH. FADH is produced as we change that four carbon compound a little bit more. And then one more time, we strip away even more electrons to make even more NADH to return us to that initial four carbon compound. And that is the Krebs cycle. <clears throat> this happens two times, one for each acetyl-CoA. So we are reducing electron carriers here. So basically what has happened is we have fully oxidized glucose now. Glucose has been ripped apart down to its, its, its carbon. We ended up with four ATP. Where did these four come from? Two came from the Krebs cycle. Where did the other two come from? The other two came from glycolysis. So now we have a total of four, still not much. So what's the point? We ended up with not very much energy. Why did we do all of this work, glycolysis, the oxidation of pyruvate, the Krebs cycle? The point is to produce lots and lots of electron carriers. We make NADH and FADH2 through this process. So we had two from glycolysis. We got two from pyruvate oxidation. Remember, this happens twice. We got uh, six, because it happens twice from the Krebs cycle, and then we got two FADH2. With FADH2 is also an electron carrier. So we got quite a bit of electron carriers now. Electron carriers are holding, they're holding energy, and that energy can be used later on. And that energy will be taken to the electron transport chain where it's gonna to help to make lots and lots of ATP. Okay, so the net gain 
for the Krebs cycle, including the oxidation of pyruvate, is 8 NADH and 2 FADH2 plus 2 ATP. So we have readily usable energy and energy of electrons, lots of it, that was produced by the Krebs cycle. So again, we need to stress that it is the value of the NADH and FADH2 that makes the Krebs cycle worth doing. And those two things are going to be used in the electron transport chain. Again, the whole point to eventually bake lots and lots of ATP. We do that by utilizing that ATP synthase. These hydrogen ions are going to flow through the ATP synthase, which is going to turn it to make ATP. Okay, and that is all for now. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know.